Hi guys, uh, in this video we are going to be focusing on drawing force diagrams, free body diagrams, resolving 2D forces into parallel and perpendicular components, and this usually takes place on a slope or an inclined plane. So the only difference really between a force diagram and a free body diagram is the actual way the object is drawn. So for a force diagram, force, um, if you're asked to draw the object and the forces on the object, you'd actually draw a block. Just say you had the object moving that way with some tension and there was some friction on the object. And uh, we know that objects have a mass, so that'd be a weight, that'd be a frictional force, and of course the normal. Right. Now the free body diagram would be drawn exactly the same, the only difference being that you'd actually draw a big dot or a big circle instead of drawing the block. And everything else would be exactly the same as before. Um, you'd have your tension, your weight, your friction, and your normal force. Yeah. Um, just, just something to remember is that you should make sure the lines are always touching the object, the forces. They should always have labels and arrows because these are the things that the examiners look for when marking your scripts. So just remember that. So we're just going to do a quick example of one of these. Uh, this example will be based on the um, SUP for 2014, um, Physics Paper 1. Um, so what we have here is a van of mass 5,000 kgs, it's going up a hill, and uh, what we're required to do is draw a free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the van, and we know the van is going up the hill. So, first thing we need to note is that it is a free body diagram and not a force diagram, so it's a free body diagram. Free body. And they want to show all the forces. Okay, so free body diagram, what's the first thing you do? So the first thing that you would do in a free body diagram is to draw your big dot. So you draw the dot here. Okay. If an object has mass, it must have weight. The first thing you do is draw your weight. And make sure that your, uh, your arrow, your force line is touching the dot. Then you can write, you can either write weight or you can write W and have a key afterwards. So for now we'll just, we'll actually write the whole thing, weight. Then we know that there's an inclined plane and uh, this object is going up the inclined plane. So if there was an inclined plane, let's just say look something like this. You could do this in pencil if you wanted to. It wouldn't be part of your actual drawing. That's the inclined plane. Now, when there's a weight, you know that there will be a normal. But the normal always acts perpendicular to the surface or the plane. So we draw the normal in. Sorry, it's a bit skew. We try a normal, normal force. That's normal. Then, if the if the van is moving up the plane, that means that there must be some force applied by the van. So, you would put your force applied or applied force. And finally, in order to make sure that the van moves, or if this any object that's moving on any surface unless stated otherwise that there, there will be a frictional force. It's nice to put it a little bit lower than the, the force applied just to indicate that you know that the friction is acting at the bottom of the object. So for that you'll get your four or five marks. Um, just make sure that you include that as a free body diagram so you must have the circle, have your arrows and your labels and that's pretty much it. So we'll do one more example, this time uh, an inclined plane, and we can do a little bit of what's mentioned here where we uh, resolve two-dimensional forces into parallel and perpendicular components. So we have another question here, for, and this is from the Eastern Cape exam, uh, what's based on the Eastern Cape exam from 2014. Uh, this is a trial exam. So this, uh, the question has been slightly edited, but it's based on that basically. So you have a block on an inclined plane. It's given that the tension uh, applied to the block is 200 Newton, but the block is still sliding down the slope. What we're required to do is draw a labeled free body diagram showing the horizontal forces acting on the block. 
So, they want you to draw a free body diagram. So you find here free body diagram and they want to show the horizontal forces. So we can do a rough sketch first to just to have an idea of all the forces acting on the object. And then after that we can draw the actual answer that we would have. So we have this some draw this is make some room here. There we go. So we have an object and they want to have an object on the slope but we know it's a free body diagram so first thing you do is draw your dot. We know that there's a weight. So your weight will be here, your weight. Um, there's a normal as well that's acting perpendicular to the surface. You have your tension force, your Ft given, and you have friction. Now the question expressly or clearly states that the, the block is moving down the slope. Friction is defined as moving in the opposite direction to the movement of the object. So if, if the block is moving down the slope this way, that means friction would be in the opposite direction. So you have a frictional force here and you have F. Right. So now they require us to draw all the horizontal forces. They want you to have all the horizontal forces, not vertical, horizontal. So how would you do that? So you can clearly see that there's two horizontal forces here. Uh, let's just make some room here. There we go. So if you have to redraw this, so if this has to be a final answer, you just draw your dot there. You have your force, your tension force, and you have your frictional force. But that's not, uh, those are not the only horizontal forces. So if you look at the vertical forces, the only vertical force here in this plane would be the normal force that's acting upwards. This weight that acts downward has two forces, a perpendicular component and, sorry, yes, a perpendicular component and a parallel component. This here, this is the parallel, and that's your perpendicular. So we could draw the perpendicular component as well. So as you, as you should remember from resultant forces, forces can be drawn anywhere on the object and it's going to have the same effect if you're drawing a free bodied object. So if you, if you wanted to, you could move this here upwards. So you're going to move it up and you can say that it's actually in this position here, this force. And your final answer, you would have your weight perpendicular. We also know that this perpendicular weight, sorry, this parallel weight, sorry, the parallel weight, we know this parallel weight will actually be greater than both the frictional force and the tension applied. So we should try and make that a little longer because the object is moving downwards. So we'd have weight. Okay. So for completeness sake, let us just calculate the weight, weight that is parallel, sorry. So, uh, let's do that and then. So, we can take it for granted, it can be proved, you should have done the proof in class, that this angle here will always be the same as this angle here. So, we have your weight, you have your weight acting down, it's here, it's the same thing. But this weight can be broken down into two components the weight perpendicular as well as the weight parallel. We know that this is equal to 30 degrees. So what is weight parallel equal to? So simply we can tell that the weight parallel is the opposite angle or is opposite to the angle. So using our basic trigonometry we should know that weight parallel will be equal to W sine of 30 degrees. Uh, for completeness sake, if it was asked for, but not in this question, we could say that the perpendicular weight is equal to W sine 30 degrees, sorry, cos 30 degrees. Because it is the adjacent angle. Some basic maths then. That pretty much wraps up drawing of free body diagrams and force diagrams. This is pretty much the same thing. Uh, just to make sure you always remember 
to have to always draw your um, to always make sure your lines or your uh, forces are touching the object or the free body in the free body diagram the circle make sure you have your labels and your arrows uh, because that's what they look for uh, make sure you, you read what the question asks whether they want all the forces the horizontal forces or the perpendicular forces or the vertical forces in other words so yeah that's about it for free body diagrams